Hey there! July marks the two-year anniversary of me using a bullet journal. Um, technically early or late June, but um, July is when I started in this guy. This is a Moleskine, uh, I forget what they call this, large, I think I may call it large, but it's basically the A5 size dot grid uh, journal. And this is what I used for like the first half a year um, of bullet journaling from July through December 20. 16 um, and so I've shown everything that's in here before but I since it's been two years I thought I would do sort of a retrospective flip through slash reaction thing um, because I haven't really looked through a lot of this in a while I did sort of just glance through and put some sticky notes over things but other than that this is genuine anyway um, I started out and I was really convinced that I wanted like a grayscale minimalist style and so I did these headers that all sort of looked the same sort of between like I was really proud of how well this um, feature log turned out I was using just like really minimalist uh, quotes to <laughs> fill in space and sort of decorate um, and I also decided I wanted to have all of my planning stuff indexed on one side and collections indexed on the other side. Now I never did get far enough into this journal to um, necessitate like another page of stuff here or for me to move stuff onto this side, but it's pretty clear that my collections took up more index lines at least than the planning stuff. So I wouldn't really recommend this. In fact, now I mostly don't even uh, index my planning stuff at all, but uh, everything's so so clean and minimalist right I was using a Crayola marker for highlight stuff here very first thing I did was places I needed to change my name because I had just gotten married in May and I started this in, in July um, list of craft projects and then my very first monthly so I just doing like a font thing standard monthly here this was a tracker for something and I don't remember what but I was filling in these squares for some reason. Um, I've always, yeah, divided my weeks in a standard monthly here, general to-do list that didn't get used all that much. And I, yeah, I was doing this for the longest time. I would put in this little meter, like into my next setup as well, uh, showing how much of my high-speed data I had used every month. And then also these blocks, or I, like we get a better interest rate on our bank account if we do 10 transactions. And I was keeping track of that in here. I don't do either of these anymore. I just sort of wing it and it's been working okay to just sort of remember to check in on our account near the end of the month to make sure that we have enough transactions. But um, yeah, that, that was useful, definitely useful. And yeah, so I started off like copying other people's weeklies. I'm pretty sure that this is sort of based off Kim Tiny Ray of Sunshine, her layout. You'll notice here, um, I said everything was going to be gray and minimalist, and it was until I decided then, no, what I really want to do is color code uh, my months. And so the first month here is red. And I went back in, and I filled in my header with a um, colored pencil. I filled in this tracker with a red marker on top. Um, just added little pops of color here and there, some extra washi tape and stuff. Um, yeah, let's see, I had a weekly tracker. I had, this is still useful, but I have this in a digital place now so that I don't have to keep going back, finding it and recopying it. Um, this is just, yeah, weekly stuff. But you'll see everything here is marked as migrated because I was really committed to only having something written at one place at one time, which in theory is good, but this kind of bothers me right now, like having all of these migrated symbols instead of crossed off symbols, because I know I got all this stuff done. I just got it done on a daily. So I would migrate it to the daily and then I would see this migrated symbol and go, OK, that means that I don't have to worry about it here. I'm worrying about it somewhere else. The other thing that I did uh, with my uh, symbols, what's it called? My key, I don't know, that was weird is instead of using a dash, for notes. I was using a dash only for actionable notes that needed to be scheduled like this one and I was using a heart for a note that was just for reference and that I didn't need to do anything about. Um, it just it looks funny now looking back because there's hearts everywhere for things that I don't really love you know like whatever. Um, yeah I 
was doing decorative headers because that was like the thing. I did some like doodles when we went on a trip because I felt like I needed to fill something in. Decorative headers, books to read, things to watch. Oh, I was doing this challenge with Annika Hanby, the, you know, folder person um, on Instagram, did it this quoted challenge and it was different quotes about different Harry Potter characters, which I'm totally down for. The thing is, I was like, oh yeah, let's do each of these prompts in a different font and it turned out so terrible and then I messed it up and I just covered it with this sticky note that I don't know where it came from, but it was like, I want to make a collection for these things, but I haven't done it yet, so I put that here. Um, this is a gratitude log, but I called it blessings and never filled it all out. Uh, this is a different challenge. See, <laughs> if I had planned ahead, I would have done the two challenges like this, but I don't plan ahead. Journaling. Another same, same exact style for the weekly, except I started doing all those quotes. So those are the quotes here. Oh, headers and things. Uh, yeah, this is some just a list of things that were projects for something. Uh, yeah, same here. I was working on something on my Hogwarts. Then I tried out a different style for my weekly. I still really like. This is the very first week that I did Alistair method uh, weekly to do lists, and I still do that a lot now. Um, so there you go. That's where that came from. More quotes. I was printing out some stickers. Oh man, I had forgotten that I went all the way back this far to print out stickers. I was thinking I was doing that later in the year. Let's see, these are just, I, instead of putting quotes on individual dailies, I started putting them all on one page. And then we went to Comic Con. So I have a packing list here, and then I took up a whole page per day so that I could write out my schedule of where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. I was really good about um, like rating each one, keeping track of what we ended up doing. So it's a nice little reminder. I can go back and remember what I did. I actually took notes in some panels, which was cool. Um, went to a you know a panel about costume design. Kept track of what I was spending. Another weekly and daily so we get back. Let's see, planning a podcast episode. Uh, still kind of do it the same way now. Oh yeah, this this uh, page. I just felt like I wanted to sort of commemorate the fact that, like, it was it was helping. The bujo was really helping, and so this is just titled because I had my bullet journal and just a list of things that I got done because I had a place to write them down and accountability for it. And then this is a weekly chore list which I've kind of forgotten about. Basically, I just had a column for each week and different rooms, things I wanted to get done each week and I crossed it off when I did it. But I don't remember if I had to remember to come back to this or if I put it on my weeklies or dailies or whatever. Some of these stickers you'll see now are from Comic-Con. Same, basically the, the monthly stayed pretty much the same throughout here. But you'll see now, uh, instead of red, everything is yellow. Same weekly, same dailies. Uh, here we go, we went, we got universal passes. So I marked off all the blackout dates. And then I also like kept track of when we went and I would circle those dates. Um, looks like I did not f come back and fill them in because January, February, I was in a different bullet journal. Um, again, a case of not planning ahead. I should have done debt payment and savings on two facing pages, but did not. Date night ideas, like never did most of these. Okay, yeah, this is a, um, I don't know why some people call this a Dutch door, because it's not really, but it's this fun weekly idea where you have your dailies and you fold it up like this. So you can see your to-do list every day and the daily that you're on. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it this first week, so I tried it again the next week here. Uh, in between, we have, let's see, a wish list of things I wanted to save up for and color swatches for my uh, Stabilo fine liners. Did it again this week, found that I wasn't using up all of the space that I you know, had and sort of thought maybe that's not the best or whatever and I'll try something else. And then I went on to this, which is sort of a rolling week where you have the same idea of like, stuff on this side that's applicable to the whole week. 
uh, along the top I put events so that they would be handy and then I used like a column so this went from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay that's just a full week and then I flip the page. At some point I start doing them sort of rolling style. And it's just a whole week. Let's see. All right, September was pink. And yeah, same same style. Uh, more journaling, some more stuff for the My Hogwarts event that I was running. Um, and then this is the dress that I made for a uh, Universal Studios thing I went to. So I was like, well, no, actually, no, this is for, for LeakyCon. I wanted to plan what I was wearing each day. And one of those days was the dress that I wore to Universal. Um, so just, you know, checklist of things I needed to source. Same, more MH stuff. This is where I was doing the rolling weeks. So I have this column is like a general recurring list, or not recurring, um, general list of things to do, you know. Um, and then <laughs> I messed up the headers here, but Monday through the next Thursday, you'll see. It was like almost two weeks worth of stuff before I ran out of space on the page. Turn the page. Here I have my general to-do list up at the top, um, which is just, I, I modeled this off someone I saw on Instagram. Some people on Instagram, I feel like it, they have a separate bullet journal just for display and another one for, for actual utility because I, you don't want to tie yourself to a certain amount of space for a to-do list because then what if you have another thing to do? I'm constantly learning this lesson. Anyway, this page lasted me from the 16th to the 28th. That's almost two weeks um, of just, you know, dailies and little things that I was doing each day. Um, so that was kind of not even a rolling week is just similar. That's the dress I was working on. And I um, had all these different events, or not, sorry, not events, different steps in the process. These are some things that I never ended up needing to do. Um, but I would be able to move them um, and so I'd be like, okay, I'll get this and this and this done this day. And I could sort of plan ahead and have like physical little things to move around. These particular days were super um, productive to the point where I have like multiple layers of sticky note in here, but then I put tape over them so that they wouldn't come off. And I needed two dailies, one page. So I took up as much space as I could. MH stuff. I think this is covering that was something else, but I covered up the header. And then in October, same layout, but I decided to use brown instead of black because I'm not a fan of Halloween, really. Similar, yeah, these are the same sort of dailies where I had it in columns. And I like it in some ways, and in other ways, I was kind of frustrated by how few pages I was going through. And I was just looking and going, man, this is how far I am into the book at this point. I've been doing this since July. And I felt like everyone else is like, <laughs> don't compare. I felt like everyone else uses up like a whole book in a year and I wasn't going to get there. And um, I was, you know, looking forward to trying something new. And so I started getting kind of tired of my dailies taking up so little space. Part of the reason why I moved to a smaller planner in January the next year. This, I thought I would copy out the schedule for our confirmation class, but then it, it didn't end up being super important or useful and I didn't really refer to it very often. Oh yeah, so this is the 2016 election. Trigger, sorry, trigger warning, but um, <laughs> there was just so many propositions on the California ballot that I knew that usually my uh, strategy is like to spend the night before going over and doing research on each um, ballot measure so that I'm ready for the day of. But that's if there's like five ballot measures. Here I had all of these people to vote for and all of these different props to vote on. So what I did was I spent like the latter half at least of November. So maybe even before that, yeah. I was doing one per day, one or two per day. Like here, prop 56, I decided to vote yes. 57, no. 58, yes. Um, and so then I would circle that. And then this was, I think I copied this into my sample ballot to bring in but I was, you know, ready to go in time <laughs> and it wasn't stressful doing everything at once. LeakyCon was in October. That was a lot of fun. Same thing as Comic-Con. I had a packing list here. Um, this is like dailies and notes. So there's some things that I had to get done that were like normal. 
Um, I had jury duty the following week, so I had to check in to see if I had to go in. Um, and then I took some notes on individual panels as well, um, which were really fascinating. Like this one on genetics was really interesting. Um, and yeah, so those are dailies. But then these here are the actual schedule of events at the con. Um, the thing that's different about LeakyCon compared to Comic-Con was that it was, this was the small one in Burbank in 2016. So it was the first time they were splitting it off of GeekyCon and it was just the Harry Potter stuff. And it was really small, like it was just one hotel. So everything was like the 10 minutes between panels you could get from one side of the con to the other and it wasn't a problem. So I didn't have to do as much planning. I could basically by Saturday, Sunday, I was just pulling up the app that had the schedule on it going, okay, what's the next hour? What do I want to go to? Just picking it going. And it wasn't a problem. So I ended up just sort of writing down things that I went to after the fact, instead of using this for planning. Um, I think these little uh, pencil markings are when the market was open and closed. Cause unfortunately for whatever reason, the market was only open during the panel period and not like between the panels and the evening activities. This would have been a perfect time to go shopping, but they closed the market. So I had to make sure to slip in either if there was occasionally there was a panel section. I didn't like a, an hour of panels that I didn't want to go to, but mostly it was stuff that I was interested in. So it was like the 10 minutes between panels. I would jump in, shop around a little bit and then go. It was uh, very busy, but a lot of fun. More tiny dailies. And then we're pre prepping for NaNoWriMo. These are all sort of notes. I was doing script frenzy that year, like as a rebel. If you are in NaNo, you know what that means. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, same exact thing for uh, my monthlies. I think this was events and this was tasks. These are weekly tasks for the whole week. These were, yeah, tasks that like, hey, let's get this done sometime this week, as opposed to tasks for the whole month. And then this is a tracker um, for the whole month. I mostly don't do more uh, monthly trackers, but uh, for a period of time, I decided I wanted to. November was one of those months. I was keeping track of nano stats, uh, little notes here about, like, it's in light gray, you may not be able to see it. But the red means I didn't do anything. Green means I did, like dark green means I did above and beyond what I was just expected to do. Normal green was like on par. Orange was barely anything. And yellow was not quite up to where I should be. Um, but I didn't end up winning. I always do. <laughs> I'm, I managed to get it done. Um, here I was having fun with some full calligraphy. And just sort of, it's a bit of a mess. But it's okay. Like... As you go along, none of this is distracting you on Thursday, for example. Um, so it will work. It's okay. These are notes for like the actual more notes for nano stuff. Um, they were in theory, they were on these little stickies so that I can move stuff around, but I never ended up moving anything around. Another my, Hog uh, my Potter watch, the podcast episode for MH. Same idea of these dailies. Um, that was election day, so that was fun. These, I think, these little dots and lines were some sort of tracker I was doing for how many pages I was writing in my nano script. And I don't remember how that worked, but it did apparently. And then I decided that I needed full page uh, charts for everything that I was writing. So this is like how many pages it's out of a hundred pages for script frenzy. Um, so I did get there in time just on the 30th and this is sort of, you know, showing where I am, um, in relation to the mean of, or like, yeah, if you stick to the average and then this was how many words I wrote per day. This is the three and a half, three and a third. That would be this line here. Um, but I just sort of marked like when I wrote fewer or more. And then I decided to try out, this is when I started watching a lot of Cindy Grinter Baldo videos of her, um, Erin Condren hourly stuff. And she was using a lot of stickers and decorations and stuff. And I was like, let's try out this hourly thing. So we've got for some reason Sunday here. 
I don't know why I started on a Sunday. Oh, because I ran out of room here. That's fine. Uh, and I had like a column and it was houred and it's pretty normal, right? Like, I don't know why, I honestly don't know why there's a sticker here. This is also when I started playing around with printing out stickers and you'll see that here. Um, I was like, yeah, let's try out these stickers and um, give it a shot. It, I didn't want to commit to like purchasing decorative planning stickers from anybody on like Etsy. So I was getting the free printable ones, printing it on um, sticker paper and then cutting them out, which takes a lot of time. Um, I was having fun with it, but I don't really care for the way it turned out in the end. It's just so messy, especially as we get a little farther along. Um, yeah, here, this is like Thanksgiving week, I think. Yeah, here we went Thanksgiving, went for a trip. And so it's like, this is just blank. Like, why is it there if it's blank? Um, I don't know, maybe you like, maybe you like how this looks. It's not bad, it's just, eh. It's not my thing, and it was just too busy, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't really use stickers like that anymore. Christmas wish list. I kept track of like what I had asked for from different gift exchanges that needed lists. And this is the stuff that I was getting for other people. But I ended up making a different one later because this one wasn't good enough. Oh, working on the, the knitting videos, the tutorial videos that are like way back on my channel. If you go and look at those, those are for MH. And that was kind of how I started making YouTube videos regularly. And that's a blank page. I should, I don't know, I should do something there. Anyway, then here I was like, all right, if we want to really try out these planner stickers, these are designed for the Erin Condren. So they're like a, an inch and a half long or whatever, or wide. I was like, well, how can we fit? It's still obviously too wide, but eh. I put a whole week on here and there are way too many stickers here and yeah, man, it's a mess. So I was, I was experimenting. This was my printing printable stickers phase and I have moved on. I'm a bigger person now. This is where I learned that, um, you know, the original Writer Carol video only has a, a five or six month future log in it. Um, so I'm like, here, I'll just put it through December. That seems plenty time, right? Well, then you go to your dentist appointment in October and you get a date for an appointment in April. And yeah, April, <laughs> and you have nowhere to put it. So I needed to put a separate future log here and I've learned my lesson and I always make sure now to have a, an, an afterwards section for catch-all stuff that may be farther out than what your future log has um, or at least at least make a bigger future log and then this very last month in here I decided to uh, try something new and instead of doing a list daily I did a grid daily so I've got a calendar I've got you see this task list I didn't point it out but for the last few months here it's had this procrastinating section um, I ended up when I moved into a traveler's notebook, putting this in like its own separate page, um, and trying to refer to it and getting these things done as like monthly resolutions. But yeah, I kept them here and stuff that I just never wanted to do. Um, journal to-do list, use more stickers, par stickers. Uh, yeah. And then I went back to the tried and true weekly, Alistair weekly with normal dailies. So I'm trying to use up more space here. If you notice, I'm like more white space, filling everything out. On my Hogwarts, I'm a dueling ref sometimes. So I help out. And so this is what it looks like when I ref a duel and uh, I keep track of like where they got hurt and how their dice rolls worked and all of that. And you know, what their current damage is. Let's see, I have a list here. Let's say I put weekend chores. Looks like I ran out of room there. Uh, this. Okay, yeah, this week I decided that I wanted to do some doodles. And so I'm like, yeah, let's doodle, 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 doodle. I didn't feel like doodling here, so I just sort of wrote a word. And then here I was like, uh, I phoned it in. <laughs> wrote a word. But it's like, yeah, let's you know, do a little daily doodle just for fun. Um, and yeah, I set stuff up in advance, as you notice here. Then this is the 
other gift list that I made when I decided that the other one wasn't working well. There were some people I had forgotten. So I kept this for the latter half of December as we were finishing up our shopping. And then I made a list of Christmas movies I wanted to watch. And I did get most of them done. These little dots and colors are for where the movie was available to watch it. And then I started planning out what I was going to do. I, I had decided that I was going to keep going because this is how far I was about halfway through. Figured I would get, you know, to the next June and then do it, I guess, July to June. But then as it is, you know, you start thinking about what you're going to do for your next bullet journal. And before you know it, you've placed an order on Etsy and you have everything planned out. Um, I was going to get this shop. The shop was called My Jot or Jot shop jot it's on etsy they make you know she makes really cool um traveler's notebooks she's based in canada i purchased it a personal size it got shipped to my old address and the people who lived there must have stolen it because they never returned it to the office i um i called several times and following up on it it was like a clearance one so it's you know i don't miss the money anymore but i did at the time so I ended up purchasing a Foxy Fix later, but until then I had everything sort of bundled up in like a piece of cardboard instead of an actual traveler's notebook. But I was planning out what each insert for my traveler's notebook setup was going to be before I actually started doing it. So this is what my thought process looked like before I knew how to bullet journal in a traveler's notebook. Christmas, a week before Christmas, just normal, normal dailies. And then for the weekends, I think we had, did we have the Friday off? Maybe we did. Yeah, so we had Friday off and Monday off. So that's cool. Um, Cause Christmas was on Saturday. No, Sunday. That was a good, a good year for holidays around Christmas. Uh, so here I have like just a to-do list for Christmas Eve and the day before gifts to wrap, stuff around the house to clean, general to-do list and notes, and other things like prep stuff that I needed to do, right? Then for this day, the 24th, and for the 25th, I have just an hourly with events because really there's not a lot of to-dos on Christmas. It's just which party do you have to be to when, and we have several. So um, <laughs> we went to mass, had Christmas Eve all evening at house then we went to another christmas party another christmas party like three and two days it's crazy but it's perfect because we get to go to everything and we don't have to miss anything but um yeah there was like one to do and it was giving a uh, a christmas card that had gotten returned to sender then some general dailies oh the mild liners that i finally bought my first mild liners with um I had some Amazon credit from a few different promotions. And so I, like the day after Christmas, yeah, I went and I um, I placed a big order with all of this uh, promotional credit that I had to get all of the stuff that I hadn't gotten off my wish list and get myself some Christmas gifts. So that was fine. And one of those things was the mild liners. Here we go, to-do list, daily dailies. And then this was sort of the idea stuff that I had um, for these little trackers that I was using early on when I was in my traveler's notebook. Um, you can always go back. This would be like January, February, early 2016. Um, I had just really started doing videos maybe in May, but at some point you'll see some videos about my traveler's notebook setup and you'll see how this worked. Um, it was pretty cute, but then after that I moved out. And this, since then, this moleskin has been sort of a general catch-all notebook that's just in my office, so I can use it for some scratch paper or whatever. There's more, um, you know, friction colors. I got these, swatched them, swatched my mild liners, swatched some inks when I got a fountain pen. And then there's just like general notes, sort of uh, some color testing that I was doing for some other things, playing around with Tombows when those came and yeah just general stuff that is um there's still let's see this much space left in the notebook so i've been making good good space use of it and i will you know won't be empty forever but i figure i may as well still use the leftover pages in here 
because uh, there's a lot of memories in here. I don't want to get rid of this notebook because it was my very first real bullet journal. And, um, you know, while I don't think I'm going back to a bound Bujo anytime soon, it was really good for when I used it. Um, and I'm glad that I did. So, yeah, I guess the moral of the story is that things change and your planner system and your bullet journal strategies change with the times and you use what works for you and discard what doesn't and um, yeah just always keep it current so thanks for watching this little trip down memory lane I will see you guys in the next video next week or on Sunday I think um, yeah have a good one guys bye